Okay, thank you guys for joining us. This is the USA Wrestling Greco-Roman Olympic team pre-Olympic press conference. We've got our four team members with us. Ildar Havasov, who is a two-time Olympian. He wrestled for Uzbekistan in 2008. We've got Alex Sancho, who is a U23 world team member. This will be his first Olympics. John Stefano is a 2019 world team member, a Marine. Alex and Ildar are also in the Army. And this is his uh, John's first Olympics, as well as Tracy Hancock. It's his first Olympics. He's three-time world team member and 2016 junior world bronze member. So you guys can um, start dropping your questions in the chat and we'll get started. We'll go to Colin or Colton Powden, who has a question for John Stefanowicz. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey there, John. It's actually Butler. How are you doing? Am I unmuted? Can you hear me, John? Um, yeah, it's Mike Hofstetler from WGAL. How are you doing? Doing well. Um, good to hear. Um, wrestling in front of people, can you address what that's going to be like with no crowd? And secondly, how your training in the Marine Corps will probably and hopefully give you an advantage uh, when it comes to that, uh, just uh, the development you've had in the Marine Corps and how it might help you uh, deal with having no crowd, uh, no real energy in the building. Mike, I think uh, our, our change in the dynamic of, of having those fans not be in attendance is something that we could have forecasted. And I, I don't believe it, it came as a huge, you know, in, insurmountable obstacle that we were, you know, not anticipating on having. But, uh, you know, whether it's the Marine Corps or, you know, the Greco-Roman program uh, in, in general, our ability to adapt and overcome from, you know, these nuances of, of adversity here and there and across the way, whether it's traveling, uh, you know, the situation that we have with COVID-19 right now and, you know, the training environment uh, and the list goes on and on, but our ability to continue to adapt, overcome from that has, it's been, uh, you know, use of teamwork and our network and our ability to continue to lean on one another. Okay. Thanks. Good luck to you, John. Thank um, you. We'll stay. Hey, Rob. Rob Rose. Hey, John. How's it going? It's going well. Um, yeah. So we uh, we talked before we headed out, and you know, obviously you said excited, kind of dream come true, being there with the travel. What's uh so far? Obviously, I haven't got on on the competition yet, but what's the experience been like? Uh, you know, actually being there and being around the other athletes you know part of team usa actually on site at the olympics so far it's actually been really great but i think that is us being able to be secluded from uh the, the hyperactivity of action that's going on over in the olympic village right now right now we are uh placed in uh, nakatagawa which is a small city approximately three hours southwest of southwest west of uh, tokyo so our ability to be able to come out here we're secluded it's as close to a bubble uh, you can possibly ask for, you know, we're in a hotel right now. Uh, amenities are great and top notch, everything that we need. We have the ability to go outside. Uh, training environment is, you know, as best as what we could ever, you know, hope and ask for in the situation that we're, we're in right now. But the hotel is just us. There's no other guests. Um, food is, you know, being prepared to everyone's dietary needs. So I, it's actually really great. Uh, Maybe a blessing, a uh, silver lining as a matter of fact, with us being out here instead of down in the uh, Olympic Village. All right, we'll move on to Chris with USA Today. Yeah, um, for Ildar, I know that you uh, emigrated to the U.S. about seven years ago. What has this journey been like for you and uh, it, it just being back on the Olympic stage with a different flag, representing a different flag now? Oh, it's... Um... It's been an honor uh, to represent our country now. Our country, Army, representing our team. Um, it's a huge honor. And our my journey was, was actually fun. Uh, joining Army, I've been in Army for six years now, representing country, representing our team. 
So it's, it's different, definitely different than was before than uh, when I was representing Uzbekistan. So yeah. Thank you. We have a question that was in the chat. This is going to be for Ildar as well as Alex. How did you end up in the army and how has your training prepared you and what does your job look like in the military? So I um, figure out like 2014, I figure out the army has the best, um, best like uh, team for Greco-Roman wrestling. So I talked to the coaches, they helped me out to get in. Um, I passed my ASVAB, I passed like army, um, basic combat training, AIT, and then uh, this is how my journey started with the whole process. So, and after, I think the same year, 2015, I won nationals and started representing the United States. How has it helped you prepare? You know, it's like, when it's the best teammates, best guys, and you wait all the time training with you, it definitely helps a lot. So we push each other every day. Well, we'll turn it over to Alex. Same question for you. Uh, okay, yeah. So I enlisted 2018. Um, I went to school at Northern Michigan University and I trained at the Olympic Training Center for about a year. Um, I had, it was, it's been a great journey for me. Um, you know, I finally, you know, pulled the trigger and made the team. Um, you know, hats off to WCAT. They definitely pushed me over the edge and allowed me uh, with all the tools that I had there to, to make this team. So I'm very grateful for that. And it's been an honor and a blessing to, to represent Team USA and Team Army. We'll go to Paul Klee, who has a question. Tracy, how you doing, man? Doing well, how you doing, Paul? Doing really good. Good. You you said before that uh, our guy TC he he kind of changed your life, shaped your life. What, what what do you mean by that? Well, uh, the, the, he's the first person that actually ever introduced me to Greco Roman, and then um, you know now here I am with the privilege of being on the Olympic team. And actually, before I met TC Dazzler, this actually wasn't even a dream of mine. So to to meet a man that not only inspires and invokes this type of uh, this dream in your life, but can can guide you and make this happen for you is it's, it's a blessing beer that I can, I can I can't even explain so I'm just extremely grateful for TC Dandler and what he's done for me thus far and Fountain your city that you came from you know it's they've had a lot of players they've had a lot of good athletes man right. but it's not it's not the easiest place to come out of how, how did that place kind of shape you into what the man you are now uh, you know, it's, I think it was a curse and a blessing for sure, because they, you know, if I wasn't in this environment, I wouldn't have been blessed enough to go down the, the trials and tribulations that I did to come across a great man like TC Dansler. But also, I don't think that if I, if I came from a place, I guess I wouldn't have, uh, maybe, maybe I wouldn't have had the grit or the toughness to, to make it here when I got here. Right. Thank you. No, thank you. All right. Well, we have a follow-up question for John. Um, it's on family. Hey, John. Um, I know you were home recently, and uh, what's it like uh, going overseas there without your little boys, without your wife, uh, knowing that your mom's not going to be able to come out and watch you as well? Uh, what, did, uh, what kind of things did they do as you? Did you hear me? I'm sorry. I might go ahead and repeat that one more time, please. Yeah, I know you were home recently. Uh, how tough is it to leave those two little boys of yours and your wife uh, leave home and uh, even your mom not being able to come out and watch and support you in person? What kind of things did your family tell you when you left? Well, I think it's gonna be a little more quiet without them here. Um, you know, straightforward. But it, it's definitely been difficult. I, I keep actually right before this interview, I was uh, I was having a, a video chat with uh, with both the boys as they they get ready to turn into the night. And every day, it's one of those things where you have to remind them what I'm doing here. And you know, it's another day closer to, to being home. But it's not the first time uh, being away. It's something that we've 
I think everybody at this table has had to, you know, deal with this is, you know, you leave home, you have to have your, your loved ones that have supported you and been your support system this entire journey. And, you know, I said it before, and I think it's something that we have to understand is, you know, it's, it's their dream come true as much as it is anyone else's. They were there from the beginning. They were there through the ebbs and flows. They were there for the victories. And we're going to be able to come over here. And everyone knows when you make the team, you want to be able to watch your kid or your, your husband or your spouse, or your dad or someone wrestle or compete at the pinnacle of their sport. Um, it's, you know, obviously without being able to experience that, it's, it's going to be a missed opportunity that we're always going to have to, we're always going to have to look back on and wonder and, and see what it could have been like. Now, I mean, without taking any credit away from anyone else, the Olympic Paralympic Committee's already reached out. They have our, our family members and our friends, um, a few of them, at least a handful, uh, heading down to Orlando for a watch party that the uh, NBC and the USOPC is putting on for them. So it's a consolation prize um, nonetheless, but it's still going to be, uh, you know, an experience that we won't be able to have. All righty. Thanks. No problem. And what kind of training you did for that at uh, AIT? Oh, my, my MIS is 88 Mike Mode Trans Operator. Um, so the, they basically will learn how to drive three types of vehicle. So it's pretty much it. What kind of training did you do um, for that at AIT? Learn, learn, how, to, learn okay. how to drive, okay. yeah, the, like te technical vehicles. Okay, cool. Also, same question, what's your MOS at AIT? Hello, uh, my MOS is 31 Bravo, which is military police, uh, pretty much like civilian law enforcement nowadays. Um, giving out tickets, making sure you know the law on base. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. Being a police officer on base. Tracy, Chris with Yes and Dave has a general question for the group. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, uh, I know John talked earlier about being in a bubble and precautions. Will, will you guys be staying in the Olympic Village when the competition starts and, you know, we're... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You, go ahead. That's the first question. Uh, no, we, we won't be staying in the Olympic Village. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of give and take with that. We also won't be allowed to go to the opening ceremonies. And so, uh, you know, that, that's just one of the things that comes with the deal, you know, and like we knew in advance, as John was saying, that some of the, the parameters we'd have to work around with COVID-19. And the fact of the matter is, is, does it come down to, do you want to be seen or do you want to get your gold medal for your country? And so, you know, when we break it down, it's, it's much more honor to be here and to be able to compete for the greatest country in the world than it is to, to be seen by the world stage, right? Right. And then I guess for, for Ildar, somebody who, uh, did Ildar, did you stay in the Olympic Village when, um, when you competed in previous games? And will you miss that experience at all? Right now it's different different experience dude so right pretty much don't care about village and stuff like i want to represent country I want to wrestle well you know win, win a medal I, I don't care about the environment what's going on inside outside this it's that doesn't matter right now um olympic experience in the village is, is different it's fun mm -hmm. i already done it before so i know what it is but for the, for the other guy for the other athletes maybe it's meaning something else but for me it's nothing got it all right do we have any more questions for the athletes i've got one for alejandro unless you want to go to is that okay Yeah, Alejandro, uh, I mean, given everything that I know you're from South Florida, everything that's going on in Cuba right now, you know, what are you, what are your thoughts on that? And, um, yeah. What's going on in Cuba? Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my, my families, you know, they're all from Cuba descent. Um, so, you know, 
they're they're they have a lot of strong feelings for that. Um, I can't comment on that since I'm in the military. Um, but yeah, you know, I feel for them. You know, I hope everything works out over there. Thank you. Any other questions for the athletes? If not, we'll give you guys uh, an opportunity to talk with head coach Matt Lindlin. All right, I'm unmuted. There we go. All right, whoever's got a question for Coach Lindlin, take it away. Thanks, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, Matt. Okay. This is Rob Rose from the York Dispatch. If you remember, but we talked uh, a year ago for sure about uh, John Stefanowitz after he had won a uh, Pan Am Games, um, and and you kind of just talked to me about um, you know his his ability, kind of like warrior mentality. Could you talk about what you've seen from him, his progression from when you kind of first saw him to you know to now being someone who's you know representing Team USA at the Olympics with you? John's one of our, our best leaders in our program for sure. And I think it's, you know, it's come from, you know, the tribulations and trials he's had throughout his life. And, you know, he's, he's uh, in the Marine Corps, he's a family man, you know, he's a husband, he's a father, he, you know, he does things right. And uh, he's taken a, on a big role as a, in a leader in our program. And not only just in our program for the entire organization, he's on the he's the athlete advisory rep for the athletes. Uh, he sits on he sits on the board at USA Wrestling. So, I mean, John is is just a consummate leader, and I think that that training from the Marine Corps has kind of put him in the position that he's in. And uh, he's got an incredible mindset, and, and he's a great competitor. So we're we're totally thrilled with the progress John's made. Uh, in, in my personal opinion, he looks better at this weight class than he did at the, the weight class below, which was a non-Olympic weight class. And uh, I just feel really confident in, in John's abilities to go out and perform and come home with some medals for the United States. Well, thank you. Just talk a little bit about this training environment and uh, what training has looked like for you guys before we head into Tokyo next week. Yeah, well, uh, just specifically, since we've gotten here, we, we've got uh, the full support of the city in Nakatsugawa. Uh, they've, they've provided us with housing and, and a training site where we got four, four Olympic mats. They're going to be the same kind of mats we're going to compete at. Um, they've provided us recovery centers for, for our athletes here. Uh, we're just, the work's done for, for our guys. We, we've had a couple really good training camps one with all three styles we had one with just the greco-roman team and then uh, the athletes all had uh, opportunities to have their own training system whether it was go overseas for competition go overseas for training or stay back with their clubs and their programs um, really it was between their their coaches it's a what we do is we we work with the personal coaches a lot with the national team and, and the athletes specifically and, and try to meet their needs. And uh, sometimes we we're asking for things maybe in a certain time, but it's this give and take relationship where we want you at this camp, tell us what we, what you need. And we want to help support that in, in any capacity we're capable of. And so I think we've done a really great job this year of just, you know, working together and, and saying that, Here's what, here's what we want and then get the athletes what they want and their personal coaches, what they all feel they need. And I think here the work's done. We're, we're just trying to keep them fresh and, and continue our training and just sharpen our skills, working on their strengths and, and the, the tactics and strategies that they will be using at the Olympic Games. Does anyone else have questions for Coach Lindland? All right, sounds good. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you all.